Today we're going to talk about using a gauge while throwing pots. Let's go. Hey everybody, today we do have an interesting subject to talk about and uh, I, it's only interesting really probably to me because it's so normal to me and it's so not normal to a lot of potters and uh, I've realized that over the years and especially since I started doing YouTube that a lot of people don't know about using a gauge or have never used one while throwing pots and uh, it's getting really close to uh, 25 years now uh, since the first job I ever had in pottery and that shop that I worked for they made mass production of a lot of things And so everything we made literally everything we made we made to a gauge And so I got introduced to that when I was 16 years old and I'd already been throwing pots for a year or two at that point and uh, But just you know in class in high school and uh, things like that. So throwing to a gauge for me is very normal now uh, I don't do it all the time anymore, uh, but when I was throwing production for other potters, I still did the majority of the time throw to a gauge. Uh, and I actually, uh, I guess because of my experience and my time using a gauge, it actually makes me faster. I don't know what it is. It's just like I've got this set point that I'm going to get the pot to, and when it's there, I'm done. And I don't, th there's no, there's less playing around with like tweaking here and there because I know where I'm trying to get. And once I get there and I get the shape, uh, it's kind of like I'm done, you know. So, uh, but that helps uh, in a lot of ways. But there are times now that uh, that I don't want to be in that mode, so I don't throw to a gauge, and I just like, all right, whatever I make, I make, and uh, just trying to tap into more of that creative side of my brain uh, that uh, that I want to access and utilize, and uh, see what see what I can make out of that side of my brain and see what happens. So anyway, and, uh, we'll talk about this gauge and how to use it. So my gauge is really very simple and uh, they can be probably even more simple than this. I've seen people use just a big chunk of clay with a stick in it and uh, that works, but uh, I wanted something that was a little more stable and uh, something that wouldn't move around on me when I'm using it, but I also didn't want something permanently attached to my wheel. So you can see I built this out of a couple pieces of plywood. I've got this smaller, uh, wider piece here, and then I've got a tall, slender piece here that sticks up. Uh, and I just screwed those two together. I clamped the, the, the bottom piece to the edge of my wheel here with this clamp. Uh, and then I use another clamp up here to hold the, uh, this is a, a wooden uh, cooking skewer that I use as a gauge just because it's long and it's slender and it's got a nice point on it. Uh, I've seen people use paint brushes and all kinds of things. Uh, I've also people seen people use like a gauge that will swing out of the way. Uh, to me, I like one that will stay right where I put it and I don't want it moving on me because if I'm gonna make pieces the same size, I don't want it moving. Uh, and so the only issue with that is, is if you get too close to that gauge and you bump it, it's not gonna move and that's gonna tear into your pot. So you kinda have to work with that. But uh, like I said, just real simple construction, but something that will stay where I put it and then uh, the, as far as the whole gauge and then also the stick will stay wherever I put it as well. I know that I'm gonna make this look easy, so I apologize in advance about that, but like I said, I have had 25 years of practice throwing to a gauge, but I, uh, I know also that the years of practice of me doing repetitive motions really helps with that because the more you can repeat the same motions over and over again, the more that's going to help you throw to a gauge because you can, if you're going to pull the same amount of clay each time and you're going to shape the same way each time, then it's really going to help you be more consistent in all the pots that you make. I know that's kind of like a uh, kind of like a duh thing, but uh, but especially when throwing to a gauge, doing the same motions repeated after one after another and getting used to uh, the clay that you have. Of course, me having all my clay balls weight out ahead of time exactly the same weight um, really helps with that as well um, and like I said earlier I don't throw everything to a gauge but I figure when it comes to certain things uh, especially dinnerware sets if you want to have a dinnerware set and they all kind of match 
it's a good idea to throw to a gauge then. That way you can make them all the same. And you don't have to get a, uh, a ruler out every single time you make a pot and see, okay, well, let's see how wide this one is or how tall this one is. And uh, like I said, not that they're all going to be uh, perfectly the same. Even when you throw to a gauge, they're all still going to be a little bit different. But uh, one of the things that I think it helps with tremendously is that my initial pull uh, when making a piece is I can tell kind of like how high I need to make that first pull uh, because of how high the gauge is. And I need to get it up close to that gauge. I don't necessarily need to get it, at least for these, I don't need to get it taller than the gauge or even all the way up to the gauge for my first uh, pull, but I need to get that air bubble out first. Um, something happened when I was plugging this clay. I've had a lot of air bubbles today, but uh, just gonna work with it. Uh, now, this is kind of like my first pull, but what I mean by my first pull is, is, is this next one that I'm doing. Um, I know how basically how tall uh, to pull that and how much I need to get out of the clay in order to eventually make that mug the right height. So I get it up pretty close to where that gauge is, just a little bit shy of it. And then uh, it also helps me understand how wide this needs to be when finished because that gauge, when I made my first mug and I was like, okay, that's the size that I want. I set the gauge to the height and width of the mug. And so as long as that stays there, then I can make the height and the width the same on all the mugs, not just the height. And so it helps me to also think about, like I was saying, how wide I'm making the cylinder as I'm pulling it. Because if I make it too wide, it's going to be hard to get the height out of it I need and to get the same shape over and over again. Another thing, if you're making uh, mugs and you want to throw them consistently, if somebody wants to buy a pair of mugs or even for adding your handles, uh, if you can make the mugs the same general size, then all your handles are going to be a lot easier to put on because they won't vary so much in the length of the handle. Um, and uh, that'll help out a whole lot. There's just certain things that it helps the whole process with that if you throw to a gauge, it can help you in the whole process. We'll switch to a different angle here in a second and I'll show you another one. Um, throw into this gauge from a different angle. All right, I'll try to keep my head out of the way <laughs> from this angle. But you should be able to see a little bit, maybe more of the, the width of what I'm working on when I do it from this angle. I'll go ahead and put my swirl on the bottom before I pull that in. So I don't have to try to do that later. And it all depends on uh, each person too, where you would want to put that gauge. Some people want it straight ahead. Some people would want it over here, over here. Just depends on, on what works best for you. There's no perfect right way to do a gauge. Uh, just what works best for you and uh, where you feel comfortable having that gauge sitting so that you can work with that. But like I said, there's no, no requirement to ever use a gauge, but if you want to make uh, I think overall it would help you, uh, if you learn to use one, it would help you with consistency uh, eventually whether you're using a gauge or not. I totally think that it helps me, uh, even when I'm not using a gauge, to just throw better pots because of all the years that I have used a gauge. It taught me to be really consistent with what I was making so that now as I'm making pieces, I don't necessarily have to fret about, you know, am I... Am I throwing well or throwing, you know, getting all the, the weight out of a, a clay ball? It's just kind of like I've got that feel from all the years of throwing and of all the years of throwing to a gauge have really helped me with that. Uh, just feeling that consistency, feeling how much I need to pull or how much I feel like I should pull out of a clay ball. These are one pound clay balls that you guys probably assumed that, but uh, it's what most people make coffee mugs out of anywhere from three quarters to a pound and a quarter. I make some steins that are a pound and a quarter, uh, but these are just one pound clay balls. And technically, I guess I didn't weigh each of these, but I, uh, 
I run them out of my pug mill and then just cut them all the same length. I know that that certain size pug, four inches is a pound. And so, um, and then I just squish them and throw them down like that. Yeah, the reason you see me, I sponge out the bottom right before I do that pull is so that when I'm done, I don't have to stick my sponge back down in there now. And even if there is a little dampness, which there's not even in that one, um, you can leave a little bit down there. You don't want to leave a, water, a lot of water, <laughs> a lot of water, say that 10 times fast. You don't want to leave a lot of water in the bottom, but even if it's a little dampness down there, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, but I like to clean that water out before I start doing that first uh, major pull so that uh, number one, it's, it's not gonna knock it out around because it's already hasn't been pulled tall yet. It's easier to pull it out and then I can add a little bit of water to the rim, do that pull and I've got just enough on the inside for my hand to glide, but it doesn't get all the way to the bottom. I'm kind of pulling that water up with my hand um, and that helps out to not have to clean that out at the end and I don't knock it out around and I don't have to use a sponge on a stick either. All right, we will do another angle here and uh, call it a day. Well, I won't call it a day. I got lots more mugs to make. Uh, this is just one shape. I'll probably make three or four different shapes and make a whole bunch of mugs here. Do all the handles in one day as well. Here's this first uh, kind of pull I'm talking about, kind of a claw kind of pull. And then this is where I'll sponge out the bottom, like I was talking about. And like I said, while this clay is still thicker here and I can kind of hold on the edge and get all the water out of the bottom. And then I just add a little bit to that rim, go back down in there and then I can pull. And I got just enough water inside for my inside hand to glide up. But when I'm done, there's not a pool of water sitting in the bottom. And like I said, you can see where I'm throwing the size, uh, the width of the cylinder, and then the, uh, the height of that, so that I can eventually get that up to the gauge. I know I'm gonna get a little bit of height out of it when I shape, like that. And then also at the end, if I need a little bit more height, I can always pull that top a little bit because I've got extra clay there. Don't like to pull the, the, the rim of my mug razor thin, you know, I wanna leave a, a little bit of a rim there. Feels better when you're drinking out of it. And then I'm gonna bring that in. Make that top. Well, there's 21 mugs out of how many ever I'm gonna make. It's gonna be a whole lot, but uh, I'm about out of mugs again, and I've got a show coming up in March. And so these are uh, being made for my gas kiln. I'm gonna fire it a couple more times before that show in March. And then as soon as I get back from that show, we're firing the wood kiln again for firing number two. And so I definitely have pieces that I've started making for that as well. It's an uh, exciting time. And uh, I hope this video helped you. I hope you learned something. And I just encourage you, just just make a gauge, even if, like I said, even if it's just a lump of clay with a stick in it that you can start with, just something to, uh, to practice and make yourself be a little bit more consistent. And uh, like I said, not, not a necessity, but if you want to get better and develop more skill, I've found that is a great way to do it because it kind of forces you to do certain things and just trying to, uh, to make pots the same size. And I promise you it will help in other areas 
as you get good of throwing to a specific gauge uh, and just practice in general. Uh, there are times in my career that I know that I hadn't tried a certain shape in a long time and I came back to it months later and it was a whole lot easier than it was last time I tried it. And I hadn't even tried that shape in months. And it was just from the repetition of, of practicing and getting used to the clay and the feel of it. And uh, it'll, it will uh, definitely pay off in the end to practice and to just make a lot, a lot of pots. Even if you don't keep them all, if you just make them, reclaim the clay and then make more, it definitely will help you in the long run. So like I said, I hope this video helped you. And uh, thank you guys for being here and supporting the channel. And uh, leave a like if it helped you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe before you go. And uh, thank you guys as always, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh... All right, here we go, we'll, we'll. <laughs> All right, here we go. We will do one more angle. We're going to talk about an interesting subject today, as I already told you, and uh, it's only interesting really because to me it's so normal. Uh, I think when I was, uh, let's see, so there's that first pull, and here's where I was talking about where I stick the sponge. Uh, wait a minute, nope. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> 